Good evening, Impulse Traders. It's Dan. How's he bringing you our, our Impulse Traders daily strategy update for uh, 6-21-2011? Um, I am making this one public because I had a lot of questions regarding the tick and the E-mini S&P 500. First off, give you a breakdown. I usually only have, um, well, I've got a number of uh, layouts that we use and I look at throughout the day, but this is my favorite. Basically, it's uh, two by four, so I've got eight charts up. I don't like to overdo it. The 6C chart is actually the futures market, the futures uh, contract for the euro dollar spot. The 6C, I, can, I usually switch this out for the Dixie um, when I want to take a, basically a look at the year inverse of the euro dollar chart. Um, but then I also usually have uh, you know some other forex crosses or, or commodities and futures down here. Right now I have gold, uh, crude, and the Aussie up. Uh, but these three usually remain the same up top, which are always the E-mini S&P 500, the tick, and the bank. Uh, bank is the NASDAQ bank, and it's uh, a very good leading indicator for uh, U.S. equity markets. And I usually have a one-minute chart up with the f uh, 55, 100, and 200-minute SMAs on it. The tick is the New York issuance up and down ratio. It is uh, quite literally the number of stocks issued to the number of stocks sold at any given moment in time and it's plotted out on a, on this chart it floats between a range usually of 1200 to negative 1200 and it could be higher than that but that's usually where the range is for a day anything above a 400 which is where i have this bar on this chart um, this dotted line rather price line at 400 above that I consider a high tick and below um, negative 400 is considered a low tick now the high in tick and the low in tick for the day are extremely important to the equity uh, index price action uh, but keep in mind this is a one minute chart for just the nice session hours um, that I that I use so today um, today's price action in the e mini S&P 500 surprised I think a lot of people people are not as bullish as I think I might be but that is it is what it is so going into today uh, at the nice open it was pretty much a buy the open and uh, we saw never looked back did not provide much uh, pullback until uh, we broke the 1290 figure then we had a pullback of about five points um, that pullback of five points is kind of important at 10:30 this morning, well, let's say 10:40 this morning, we put in our previous our, our previous high. At 10:40 in the tick, it is not the high for the day so far. The high for the day was actually at 9:40. So, uh, so we actually had bullish divergence there still going. In other words, at 10:40 this morning, um, around then I had a tweet that said, you know, we have bullish divergence uh, for the day. The high in price is. You know, not the high and tick and, and that continued on for the rest of the day in other words we continued higher until a new high in price was made with a new high tick and we did so we actually so at 1040 then we had a sell-off we put in our low tick for the day at 1234 a negative 813 read on the tick which is not very low looking at price sure enough at 12 um, what did I say? 12:34 was the exact minute. Yeah, 12:34. 12:34, the exact minute in price was right here. So we put in you know minor new lows here, but basically um, at that new low tick, we put in a low in price after that rally. Holding that level with the low tick suggests that that may have been the sell-off for the day. If we had continued lower and made new without making a new low and tick we could have sold off in the close we didn't we held support and continued higher until a new high and tick was made sure enough our high in price is at at 139 in the afternoon and the high and tick was of course right at 1339 which is 130 uh, right there at 139 uh, in the afternoon for the nice session um, so that's that's how we that's how we use the tick uh, you you get divergence in other words if you when you have a new high in price but not a new high in tick you will continue higher until a new high tick is made 
bank, of course, um, supported this, um, this this argument as bank bank two found a low for the day. Um, well, from the nice open, it was pretty much straight up. Um, could not break down new lows, and then uh, at 13.39, it was still rallying. Um, you know, while uh, I'm sorry, it was rallying while uh, the ES was trying to put in a low. So that's usually a leading indicator. Okay, so that's how the tick is used, and it's kind of hard to see when it's not in real time. But um, you know, I'll try to call that out more often. More importantly, let's look at. And most importantly, let's look at the euro dollar. So we've looked at the euro dollar in a big, on larger time frames. Today, let's just look at it on a 15-minute time frame. And the reason is, is because we traded a, our setup that has worked so far was a 15-minute setup. So bring up Fibonacci retracements. So from our 140.70 lows, to the 143 highs, we held that 50% retracement to 142.07. We got long on this first dip after that level held at the 142.25, and we took it basically to the 144 target that this long had, right? Which is where we are sitting today. We are breaking through this target currently. Now, do I think this market has much steam to go much higher right now? Mm, maybe not, but nevertheless it's in long set it's in a long and uh, we traded it to target and now the next entry for this trend is from entry low to the target high wherever it forms should be in this area and it's at the 143.07 so we're buying a one f uh, we have orders in at 143.10 and everything is against a 142.75 stop which is our invalidation for this trend higher. Now, technically speaking, from the lows to new highs, uh, the uptrend could remain valid while above, uh, what does that look like, 142? But, um, you know, I'd, I, it's, it's a little, you know, you have to be cautious because technically from the 147 highs to lows, uh, we are holding a 50% retracement right now. So I don't want to put too much risk on the table. Or, I mean, we're not holding, but we haven't invalidated. We're actually breaking that level, which would be a short level. And that was at the 143.80s. Uh, so, but we're long, and we're going to stay long as such. Inside this last leg higher, so after that entry, the euro dollar, and now, so this is the, the measure moves at inside this leg up that took us up to targets. The first halfway back was sloppy, but it technically never closed below 61.8. It blew through targets, and then f from previous highs to new highs, held an extension long, which traded to target. So keeping with same anchor, new high for this extension, which is how you do how extensions move. Came down, never invalidated the 143 figure, which is with its invalidation, and has now traded to its 16 uh, targets that I had mentioned prior, previously. Now, because we're hitting both a 15 minute long and a, I guess you could say, the extensions inside of that 15 minute long's target. Um, we do have the possibility to hold a same anchor new high at the 143.40 figure. So if you're going to work into a long, the two areas I see to add right now, and the safer area would be the 143 figure or the 143.10 figure, but anywhere I see a buy zone at 143.40 to 143.10 stops against 142.75, where the invalidation for this um, series of measured moves is at the 143, 142.75 area. So that's that's what I see going on now. Um, so I do expect you know us to roll over, considering we've hit two, uh, we've hit the targets for the series that took us up inside of the slag, as well as for the larger setup from the 142 figure uh, long to the 144 target. Um, so expecting some uh, 
some consolidation us to roll over a bit here and looking for a buy area right here which actually comes in around uh, if you have the 15 minute chart up and have a 200 uh, SMA on it's going to come in right around where that 200 uh, SMA is on a 15 minute chart moving over to motive wave uh, euro dollar here we go so the primary in euro dollar um, we kind of set thought maybe we're range bound here and it is kind of looking that way uh, we are flagging above this major daily trend line what was resistance and now is support drawn from the 160 all-time highs to the uh, October or November 2009 highs um, we, we broke above that level and have tested it now as twice the support and it is holding if this is some kind of wave four uh, you know I maybe triangles a B C and we're in D and then we'll get E down and in this wave four triangle, uh, but I do see us in some kind of flat or sideways consolidation, um, sideways to up consolidation. So I have seen no reason to be short euro dollar um, on the longer term. The S and P 500 and the euro dollar are back to being married. They are again, you know, the euro dollar played catch up with the green S and P 500 when they diverged there for the first week in June. Uh, they both sold off together, but they both found a bottom together and are now uh, look to be in a risk on rally. Uh, longer term measured moves on the euro dollar just to give them justice uh, so we basically broke the all the way halfway back short right so we can take that off uh, we are holding the 140 figure which calls up a is that right yes the 154 targets now um, and uh, we uh, inside of that you know we, we consider this this sell off this three legs down as a hold of that area and we're now moving higher in a series of measured moves uh, we are holding technically or have not invalidated a short setup from previous highs to lows but because we are in a larger long and holding longs into this level we can't trust selling this this uh, this short setup in my opinion to back that up the euro franc um, does appear like it may get a bounce here which would in my opinion mean uh, possibly some euro strength uh, which could correlate into a rally in the euro dollar um, I see this as an A and then a three leg move down and looking for some kind of sharp rally in C uh, before we get some kind of larger push down and um, to complete this a, some kind of fifth leg down before we get a larger consolidative pattern like this prior fourth wave dollar franc you know oh perfect example here if we see euro franc we think that maybe we'll get a bounce euro dollars looking slightly bullish and dollar franc is looking bearish um, I I just don't see any reason to be long the dollar yet um, all right and that's actually all I have for you today uh, covered a good amount of stuff um, but you know trends up until it's not and um, um, you know, I'm kind of now we're looking for uh, continued um, continued rallies in the euro dollar, or, or at least some kind of dip we could buy uh, down to the 143.10 uh, figure, 143.40 to 143.10. We have orders in at 143.10. Um, all right, everybody, uh, have a wonderful evening. I will uh, be back with you as price action develops.